Are you ready for the word? Praise him. This is Pastor Pearson of Word of Faith Christian Center here in sunny San Antonio, Texas. A Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church where Jesus Christ is Lord and you'll never be bored. We want to welcome all of you back to our broadcast and I pray it's being a blessing to you and yours. So sit back and relax as I bring a message from the Word of God just for you. But please, please, please have an ear to hear what the Lord is about to say. Because if you do, I guarantee you that you're going to be blessed today. So without further ado, let me bring today's message to you. But before I do, I've got a question to ask you. Are you ready for the word? Because ready or not, here it comes. Once you change the truth, it becomes a lie. And once you, and if you put your faith in a lie manifesting for you, then, then it ain't going to happen for you. At least not what God said. You might get the lie, but you ain't getting what God said. Amen. So, their instability sets up and even fuels their further misunderstanding and, and eventually their misapplying of the word of God. It fuels their misunderstanding because it stated that they had a misunderstanding. They don't really understand it. They got a problem understanding it because they got a problem understanding it. I, I, I don't understand this. I don't understand how it is that I can pay cash for things. I don't understand how it is that I could be rich. I don't understand. I, look, I've tried to be rich before. I just, I just got broker. Well, see, that's because you didn't do what words said. God wasn't the one involved in that before. Now God's involved in it. Well, see, my marriage wasn't working. I don't believe it can work. It can if you let God in it. But if you keep him out of it, it won't work. See, the Bible tells us why these unlearned and unstable people are willing to reject God's word by perverting it. I love the word of God. It not only tells you what they did, it tells you why. Because the Bible tells us why these unlearned and unstable people are willing to reject God's word. It's because something or some things in the word were hard for them to understand. It was hard for them to understand. Truth. This truth hour. What do most people that you know, I ain't going to put it on you. That way you can go ahead and tell me the truth. Most people that you know, that when they run into something hard, what do they do with that which they run into that's hard? Hands, please. Somebody help me. Yes, sir. He said, makes excuses. Hey, it's God. Anybody else? Yes, sir. He said they try to do it themselves. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Johanna. I thought he did. Praise God. Yes, ma'am, over there. Loud. They run away from me. I can put that in one word. Quit. And when they try to understand what God said, with their natural mind, Try to understand naturally something that God says spiritually. Try to understand naturally something that God is speaking supernaturally. They quit right then. No, no, I can't do that. No, that can't be done. No, that's not right. God said it is right, but they'll accept it as wrong. And then at that point, they go wrong because they now try to either drop it or modify it. To match what it is that they, they can believe. He tells you what their problem was. I'm, I'm teaching real good whether y'all know it or not. The problem is, is that they, 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 they don't understand it. So therefore they protect, they, they're willing to reject it. Hallelujah. See, because they couldn't understand it, they rejected what it actually said and or promised. They perverted or they perverted it to be what they could understand and then accepted that. He said what he said. They couldn't accept what he said the way he said it. So they modified and say, okay, now I can accept it like this. They accept the perverted version of what they could accept the word was saying and rejected that which God was actually saying. They accepted the perverted version that they could accept what he was saying and they rejected the actual word that he was saying. Their misunderstanding of what God was saying caused them to misapply God's word and miss out on God's promises from that point forward. To misapply God's word and miss out on the promises. For example, just quick example. You have a whole, good see bro. You have a whole slew of Christians that don't speak in tongues. 
even though it's a promise that's written all throughout the New Testament that you can have. Jesus said it. Paul said it. Pete said it. Everybody said it. But because somebody couldn't fit that into their thinking, they modified it to match their thinking. Something that they could fit and then believed that. So because of that, you have a whole mess of believers who just believe God doesn't want you to speak in tongues. They believe God doesn't do that anymore. Oh, that went out with the last apostle. There ain't no last apostle. Hallelujah. And plus that, the tongues wasn't tied to the apostles. The tongues was tied to the Holy Ghost. Now, when the Holy Ghost leave, then I can understand you saying that. But it wasn't tied to the apostles. It was tied to the Holy Ghost. Because the apostles started doing it because of the Holy Ghost. It's when he showed up. Now, when he leave, then I'm with you. But if he ain't left, then that's not, that's not true. That's not true. Does that make sense? Hallelujah. But because they believed that, they believed it because it fit their thinking. And because it fit their thinking, then they said, I can accept that. And so from that point forward, it began to misapply God's word to be able to say that that's what he really means. Even though the scriptures say it, they still read right past it. Or when they get to that point, then they put in the false concept so that they can still stay comfortable that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and living like I'm supposed to live. Amen. Just like, for instance, he says clearly in his word, forsake not the assembly and know yourselves together as the manner of some is. How clear is that? But what happens in believers' lives? The opposite. Because then they got to make it fit what they think. Well, he didn't mean all the time. He, he, he meant, he meant, like, whenever it's convenient. Why? Because I only come when it's convenient. So I have to modify it to match what I can believe. And then miss out on the, on the benefits that come from you receiving the pure word of God. He said himself became poor so that we could become rich. Most folk locked down right there. They, they, they can't see that. I can't see at this point in my life me becoming rich. I don't have anything that I'm doing it that can make me rich. I wasn't born to rich people. I wasn't born with skills and talents like other people are. But in, you don't look at a promise of God based on you. You look at a promise of God based on him. But because you have doubt and unbelief, it causes you to want to take that word and modify it. Well, he just wants some people rich. It doesn't, it's not for everybody. Show me in the scripture where he said it ain't for everybody. And then I can go with that. But that's not what he said. But we have trouble accepting what he said, so we modify what he said to match what we can accept. And then we walk around saying we're in faith, but you're in faith in a lie. You're not in faith in what God said. I told you this is the most hideous and the most dangerous of them all. Because you're believing something, but you're not believing what he said. Therefore, you'll never receive manifestation of what he said because your doubt and belief made you change it to fit your heart in your head. Healing is available. That's what the Bible said. I can show you time after time after time after time where he said everybody was healed. All were healed. All multitudes was getting healed at the same time. But you got all kind of folks. Well, that went out with the last apostle. Excuse me, healing wasn't tied to the apostles because they weren't even apostles yet while the healing was going on. They, they weren't even good disciples yet. <laughs> and healing was going on. Ain't got nothing to do with them. Jesus is the healer. Does that make sense? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. But we don't believe he'll do a headache though. When I get cancer, I'll check on him. But he can, he can handle your headache. Toe ache. Even that rear ache. That you know. Praise God. Hallelujah. He can handle them all. Because he said over and over again, he healed them of all diseases. He healed them of everything. That's what he said. But we'll modify that and change it to what fits our thinking 
and then we'll move forward thinking we're in faith and in doubt and unbelief like a mug and we'll never receive the manifestation of what he said because we didn't believe what he said. Why is that? We just learned because some of them don't understand it. I don't understand that. See, understanding is important. Don't make think about that because the Bible says in all you're getting, get understanding. But when it comes to believing, it's not necessary. Understanding ain't got nothing to do with believing. I said it ain't got nothing to do with believing. Understanding is not a prerequisite for believing. It's not a prerequisite for believing. That's why it's called faith. Don't need you to understand it. Do you understand? Did you, when anybody, when you received your salvation, did you understand how it happened? I know I didn't. Didn't make no sense whatsoever. Let me get this right. This emaciated, jacked up looking dude on the cross. Is who helped me? He ain't even helping himself. Look at it. Because I didn't have an understanding. <laughs> Y'all looking at me like that. Praise God. I, that's, that's how I saw it. But when the gospel was preached to me, saying the same thing about this dude on the cross, faith was placed in my heart. And it gave me the ability to believe. Romans chapter 10 says, in, 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 in verse 8, it says, but what saith that the word is nigh thee, even in thy heart and in thy mouth? That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine, not in your head, in thine, why not your head? Because your head ain't got nothing to do with this. You don't have to understand it. But do you believe it deep down within you, the real you, that one on the inside of you? You know the one that hurt you when your first boyfriend, girlfriend left you. Why y'all laugh? Y'all didn't get left. Y'all was the leavers. How about this? When your goldfish died. Praise God. When your goldfish died. And, oh, see, I'm, I'm starting to hit it now. When your goldfish died and you came home and you saw it like laying upside down in dirty water. That's probably why it died. It choked on its own mess. But anyway, it, it died. Praise God. And your mama flushed it down the toilet and you're like, oh, it's kind of like you was like crushed. You was like crushed. And they just, just, just had to take you to the dime store, get you another one. Praise God. Hallelujah. Nemo, Nemo, Nemo dead. Praise God, Goldie, whatever you call them. They was, <laughs> but that one hurt you. That's the real you on the inside of you. He said, if you believe it there, you don't have to understand it. You don't have to understand salvation to receive it. All you have to do is believe that God's word is true and God will do what he said he'll do. Just like you don't have to understand how he's going to make you rich. You don't have to understand how he's going to heal you. You don't have to understand how he's going to deliver you. You don't have to understand how he's going to manifest all these things in the middle of your life. He'll say, you don't need understanding. That takes too long. He said, I want to get this to you. Are you listening to me over here? All I need you to do is believe. What do you need you to do? Because remember, your belief is based upon your credence that you give the person who said it to you. See, because when you have trouble understanding what he said, and that's locking you down, just drop that right there and then go back to who said it to you. Wait a minute, God said this. So even if it don't make sense, I'm going to do this. Come on, Mary. Remember Mary? Mary did that. Remember, she asked the, the, the angel, how this going to happen? See, I know not a man. And then he told her, you're going to be overshadowed by the Holy Ghost. And that which is within you is going to be a holy one. And he gave her everything. And she still didn't understand. Preface was more confused after he said it the second time than after the first time. But she had sense enough to say, be it unto me according to your words. I'm going to go with what you said. Let's roll. And for you to ask, did you understand what he said? No, I didn't understand what he said. But I went with it. See, that's what some of y'all keep getting locked up. You're still trying to understand everything. That's why you still stand. Because you're trying to understand. Instead of move forward into what God has in store for you. You're about to bust your head trying to understand everything. Just trust God and keep moving forward into what he has in store for you. You ain't never understood everything anyway. Why is this going to be different? I'm teaching. See, when you don't see what he's saying, see the one who said it. When you don't see what he's saying, I can't see that. Don't see him. Don't see that. See him. Quit trying to see that. See him. When you have trouble believing what God said in his word, Believe the God who said it. Don't pay attention to what he said. Just believe who said it. See, the results of their resting, that is twisting and altering the scriptures, that is the word of God. That is the promises of God. 
is, according to the scriptures, their own destruction. Verse 16. And also in all of his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, they twist, they altered, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. They do it unto their own destruction. Which means the results of their resting, that is twisting and altering the scriptures, to their own liking is their own destruction. Now this word destruction right here means ruin or loss. It means ruin or loss. That's whether it's physically, spiritually, or whether it's eternally. There's ruin and there's loss. Which means their own twisting the word to match what it is that they can see is the loss of seeing the manifestation of what God promised would occur in their life. The results of twisting the word to what they can see is they're not seeing the manifestation of what God promised them in the midst of their life. See, God would have manifested in their lives everything that he said if they only believed what he said. God would have manifested every single thing in their life if they just believed what he said. Can I make it more personal? God will manifest every single thing in your life if you just believe what he said. Don't, don't, don't change it. Don't alter it. Don't modify it. Don't reduce it down to what you can believe. Does this make sense? See, God would have manifested in their lives everything that he said if they'd only believe what he said. But their doubt and unbelief in what he promised ruined their chances to have the manifestation of what he promised because there's loss and there's ruin. They ruined the chance for them to receive it. Verse 17 says, ye therefore, which means this is what you should do as a result of their, what they did. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, how they can jack folk up and cause them to never receive what God has in store for them? Beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. He said, because you know this can happen, then you ought to pay close attention. You ought to beware. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. You ought to beware. Lest she also being led away, which means there we can look at them and say, mm -hmm, look at them, look at them. He said, you hold up, sweet. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself, because you can be doing the same thing, too. And receive the same dis destruction that they do. You better remain steadfast. See, the alternative is for us to continue to do it, become steadfast and stay steadfast. That word steadfast, right? That means stability. See, the lack of stability concerning God's revealed word fosters doubt and unbelief. Which means when you recognize that you are unstable about what God said, then you better master, you better master on what he just said for the next little while. If you, uh, let me make sure I'm clear. If you're unstable about anything he said at any point in time, you need to master what he said from that point in time. That is your new study, what he just said. That is your new devotional, what he said. Why? Because the quicker I believe what he said is the quicker I can get to the manifestation of what he said. But if I remain stable, I, I remain open to Satan to come in and be able to bring, help me bring lies and other things in that would cause me to reduce what it said to what the devil's saying rather than to continue to move forward and accept what God is saying. Does that make sense? Because if you recognize instability, you better hurry up and make it stable. If you was riding down the highway and you noticed your wheels starting to wobble, what's one of the first things you're going to do? Anybody, hands, please. Yes, ma'am. She said, slow down and pull over. Why'd you pull over? Because you felt the instability and you wanted to find out what it is. And what if you found out that the lugs was loose? What would you do? What would you do? What'd you do? Tighten them. Now, if we understand that with something like that, if you unstable with whatever God has to say, why don't you tighten it? Pull over, stop right there, don't go any further, and tighten what's loose. I really don't believe that. I'm having trouble believing that God will make you prosperous. Then pull out every prosperity scripture, pull out everything that the word says about prosperity. Flood yourself with that word. Baptize yourself in that word until you pick up the characteristics of that which you've been immersed and submerged in. 
until you can come out dripping and be like, oh yeah, see, wait a minute now. I know that's true with prosperity scriptures flowing off of you. Is anybody hearing me up in here? If you have trouble believing that God will heal you, you better pull out every healing scripture that you can find out, every book on healing, every tape on healing, every CD on here. Pull up the MP3 on here, and you better you better saturate yourself in what he said. Because remember, the ones that were subject to this were the ones that was unlearned and unstable. They didn't know it. Well, if you don't know it, and that's the problem, don't now modify it and cause a bigger problem. What you do now is solve the problem of your not knowing it and come to know it. Does that make sense to anybody over here? That makes sense to me. God's word is supposed to provide us stability, not instability. When you hear a word of God, you're supposed to become sure. Like, yeah. If you hear a word and you be like, ooh. Stop. Danger, danger. Will Robin. Unstable alert. Unstable alert. It's time to pull over and tighten it up, baby. Tighten it up. It's time to tighten it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once it's tightened up, get in your ride and go and move forward into what God got in store for you. Mmm. You can even make up lost time, praise God. See, hearing God's word is supposed to cause faith to come, not doubt and unbelief. Faith to come, not doubt and unbelief. So if doubt and unbelief rises where the word is spoken to you, stop in the name of love and make this thing fit tight as a glove until you know it. Does this make sense? Because it just pointed to the part, the place where you're unstable. Get stable. Because those other folk have doubt and unbelief because they rejected God's word. See, Peter warns the readers of his letter to not get caught up in instability like them. He said, don't get caught up like them. Eastside Detroit version, it says it this way. Don't you be tripping just because they tripping all over the word. Don't you be tripping because they, just because they tripping all over the word. I remember I used to be in, I used to be in Bishop Church, praise God. And, and, and bishop or somebody would get to preaching certain things. I just use prosperity, for example, that we can be prosperous because the word says it. I walk out with some folk and they'd be like, man, I don't know about all that. I said, well, you ought to, you know, you ought to get to the, well, all we had was tape then. You ought to get the tape and you ought to listen to that again then. Because, man, I, I, I'm sitting there looking in the Bible with did When you were looking in the Bible too, when he was showing it to you? And they'd be like, yeah, but I, I said, well, do, hear it again. Yet again, they were like, man, all I know is my uncle been, a, he been in church for half his life and he ain't had that. Well, yo, 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 what they got to do with you, man? Well, he never believed it. Well, just cause he was tripping over it don't mean you trip over it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your uncle never made it past fifth grade either. <laughs> you at least graduated from high school. Why didn't you just stop at fifth? This far as my, my, my uncle went. Just because he stopped for whatever reason, no negative statement, I mean, you got to stop. And I don't care if the entire body of Christ broke. I'm going to receive the riches that he has in store. Because I ain't going to be tripping because you tripping. Hallelujah. What your mama teach you? Don't be following everybody else. If there was a walk off a cliff, would you walk off a cliff too? Anybody else mama say stuff like that? No, you ain't going to do it because that's stupid. Well, they did it. We could use that excuse on the word of God too then. Yes, I saw them stupid and leave. Then don't you be stupid and leave. I saw them not believe. Don't you be stupid like that. Just because they tripping don't mean you be tripping. Remember, you're going to be an example of one or the other. You're either going to be an example of the fact that God does what he said he's going to do. Or you're going to be an example of the fact that God's promised that you ain't going to get it. It's true. Question is, which one is you? Verse 18 shows you the alternative. And that this is what we should want to do. Then we come close for that. Verse 18. It says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. We need to grow. Well, that's all that we have time for today. We trust that you were blessed by what the word of God had to say. Call a neighbor, call a friend, tell them to tune in. But when you do, know that we're going to ask the same question of you. That is, are you ready for the word? Y'all stay blessed.